this weekend. All that matters is that we are gamers. We are, all of us, creators of our own stories together. Welcome home. 15 years ago today, on the 26th of March 2010, NVIDIA revealed their new DirectX 11 GTX 400 series at the PAX East Expo. The cards released were the top-end GTX 480 and the slightly more affordable cut-down 470 cards, with others in the family to release later down the line. Cleverer people than me have done deep explorations of these cards, so I'm not going to delve into details other than to say that the MSI-flavoured one I have here has the exact spec of the reference model, complete with all of its ROPs and 32-bit physics support, and I'm curious to find out what it can still do on its 15th anniversary. After applying a huge amount of fresh Noctua NHT1 thermal paste to mine, it tops out at 85 degrees when stressed. These cards on the Fermi architecture ran hot, and the coolers ran loud to keep them under control, so at the time there were plenty of jokes about it. Shortly after their release, AMD produced a video to poke fun at the heat and power consumption. Police, police, get on the ground! Get, get on the ground! ground now. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! <laughs> Fermi again. It's the third time this week. Talking of power consumption, I'm testing this in an open system comprised of an MSI B550A Pro motherboard, a Ryzen 7 5700X3D with a Deep Cool Assassin 3 cooler, 32GB of G-Skill RIP Jaws 5, 3600MHz DDR4, and a crucial T500 2TB SSD drive for games. The most I've seen this setup using from the plug with the 470 in use is 258.1 watts, which could have been higher. But FYI, I've also changed the PPT, TDC, and EDC PBO limits to lower the TDP on my CPU. With the card being so old, I'm stuck on the 391.35 driver release from 2018, and using Windows 10 because Windows 11 requires Display Driver Model 2. The driver for the GTX 470 is only WDDM 1.2, so Windows 10 it is. I'm going to throw pretty much every benchmark I can at it to see what this spotty teen is capable of on its 15th birthday. So as the NVIDIA rep put it at its reveal, let's crank that shit up, right? <laughs> First off, we'll look at synthetic benchmark results, then in-game benchmarks, and some gameplay. Firestrike gets a score of 2,491, and Night Raid achieves 11,013 points, both of which are apparently legendary scores no doubt propelled to greatness by the rest of the hardware. Heaven finishes its run with an average of 35.6 FPS and a score of 898. Superposition at 1080p medium surprised me by running it all, topping out at 2,285 points after running it between 14.1 and 21.6 FPS. Catzilla, which is very silly, got 4,035 points at its 1080p setting getting up to 44 frames per second and dropping down as low as 6 FPS, depending on the test. The DirectX 11 Alien vs Predator benchmark doesn't have any settings to alter, but gives a decent showing with 29 frames per second minimum, 51 average, and 83 maximum through its run. Dawn of War 2 has its own benchmark, and at ultra settings the 470 cuts through it with ease, getting 30 minimum, 86 average, and 154 max FPS. Borderlands 3 set to medium is a bit harder on the 470, with it barely scraping over 20 FPS at its highest point. It only has 6 frames between its lowest and highest points on the benchmark run. Setting it to very low only gives it a max of 30 FPS and a minimum of 19, so perhaps lower the resolution if you feel you want to play this game on a 470 in 2025. Rainbow Six Siege seems to have patched out the 470 as usable hardware, but before it did that, I recorded its benchmark on regular medium settings and it did quite well. Ish. Minimum 15 frames, max 35, and average in between them at 26. Not great, but now I can't retest at low settings. Thanks, Ubisoft. GTA 5 with the advanced settings turned on and 2 times MSAA is very playable, going from a minimum of 43 FPS up to 70 and averaging around 55. Random bit of trivia here, but I've never played a single GTA game. Hard to believe I know. 
drop a comment to tell me I'm missing out. Tomb Raider, set to ultimate quality, maxes out at 41 frames per second with a minimum of 20 and an average of 28. Setting it lower would obviously make it more playable. Rise of the Tomb Raider has three tests just to be a pain, but an afterburner recording of all three when set to low settings gives an overall minimum of 24 FPS, average of 36, and a maximum of 54. Things get a bit freaky in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and from looking at other videos on this card, I'm not the only one. Perhaps it's down to a limitation of the old driver, but everyone's clothes have turned into some kind of shifting camouflage. Maybe a texture filter issue? Anyway, when set to the lowest preset, it comes out close to the first Tomb Raider at ultimate settings. Minimum of 20 FPS, average of 28, and maximum of 49. Batman Arkham Knight, set to low, fares a little better, but not by much. 24 at the least, 30 as an average, and 46 FPS at its fastest on low, with all the enhanced effects turned off. Going back in time again, we have the Dirt 2 demo. This flies along at its highest setting preset, with a low of 59, average of 66, and max frame rate of 72. Then with Far Cry 2 set to ultra high using DirectX 10, again you'll have no problem. The repeated benchmark gives a minimum of 54 FPS, an average of 75, and a maximum of 121. 2016's Doom Reboot set to high is still probably a bit too high for the 470. Before we even get outside, the minimum frame count you can expect is a mere 20, with an average of 25 and a max of 39. So if you absolutely have to play Doom 2016 on a 470 for some reason, make sure to set it to medium. Deus Ex Mankind Divided has its own benchmark in the extras menu area. With it set to low, it gets similar scores to Doom, a minimum of 21, average of 26, and maximum of 31 FPS. This might be another one to set to a lower resolution on the 470. The Alien Isolation benchmark set to Ultra provides a far better indication of a good gaming experience with a minimum of 33 FPS, average of 42, and high of 57. Not that I'll ever play it, you understand. I'm an easy target for a jump scare. The Monster Hunter Online benchmark bounces all over the place with no anti-aliasing set, getting a low of 10 FPS, an average of 26, a maximum of 70, and cats that think they're people. Titanfall 2, with a mix of medium and low settings, runs surprisingly well, until you get to the scripted Titan fighting sequence where the frame rate then tanks to 21 FPS. Until then, it was getting just shy of 40 FPS when running and gunning through the jungle. Crisis 3 also runs very well when set to medium settings and is one of the best looking games to run on the 470. Maximum FPS will of course fluctuate depending on the environment you're in, but outdoor heavy weather effects hit it in the low 30s, climbing to low 50s when indoors. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast with everything maxed shows that it'll run on a potato these days by getting a minimum of 122 FPS, and the flattest frame time graph I've seen when testing this card. Not really a surprise when the game is now 20 years old. Bioshock Infinite doesn't disappoint on the 470 either, with an FPS count between high 40s and high 80s when set to very high settings. Moving on to a game with a similar aesthetic, we have Atomic Heart, which I looked at briefly in my last video. I'm still shocked that this game runs on a 470 at all, but it does. Barely. With the lowest graphics setting at 1080p, we have a minimum of 13 FPS, an average of 19, and a high of 42, but I only got that from looking at the sky, so it's kind of a cheat to inflate the numbers. Skyrim Special Edition, with its settings on high, is perfectly playable on the 470. Looking around during the game intro on the cart gets a minimum of 27 FPS, an average of 35, and 51 as a maximum. You may want to boost those lows by dropping the resolution or lowering settings to medium. Battlefield 5 is another game I didn't expect to run, but after seeing a 470 video on the Random Gaming in HD channel, I renamed the file that was blocking the game from running, and it runs just fine. I did find, though, that renaming the file causes other games not to launch instead. For example, GTA 5 won't finish loading the Rockstar app without renaming it back again. Anyway, with all the settings set to low at 1080, you can expect figures from a low of 24 FPS up to 43. Probably a good idea to get this set to 720p if you want a better experience. 
Terminator Resistance is another modern-ish game which brutalizes the 470 at 1080p low settings. Open outdoor areas will drop the FPS count to low teens, but more enclosed, simple indoor areas will see the highs in the upper 40s. You can expect an average FPS count in the low 20s, so for a playable game, this is another to set to a lower resolution. The Metro Last Light Redux benchmark on its high settings runs about the same as Terminator Resistance, with a minimum count of 18 FPS, average of 26, and a maximum of 40. But hey, at least its 32 bits physics support still makes the 470 three times faster than a 5080 when things get physicsy. You can play Metro Exodus on low if you want, but it'll look absolutely terrible. Setting the benchmark to normal settings gives the GTX 470 the slowest FPS counts of anything I tried, apart from in Baldur's Gate 3. Talking of which, with everything set to low at 1080, Baldur's Gate 3 is quite simply the worst game you can try to play on a 470. Getting out of your pod is done via slideshow at around 5 FPS, and regular map exploration is a 10 FPS torture. Lastly, we have Fortnite. On the performance mode, with epic view distance and high textures, the 470 gets minimum frame rates in the mid-40s, an average of 83, and a maximum of 152. It's a lot more playable than when set to regular DirectX 11 mode, where the same playthrough nets us minimums of 23, an average of 33, and a high of only 48 FPS. Performance mode seems to be the power-hungriest game of all the ones I tested, hitting a usage of 258.1 watts at one point. All the other games use between 200 and 220 watts. This is assuming I'm reading this thing right, though. So, on its 15th birthday, should the GTX 470 be something you might consider? Not really. It's hot, it's loud, it can't run modern games, and there are better options out there for retro rigs. As a parting message, I have a request. No, it isn't to like or subscribe, although, hey, monetization would be nice at some point. But I'm asking if you out there could keep your eyes open for one of these. It's a Zalman FC ZE1 PC case I'm pretty desperate for. It's the final piece in my so far two-year quest for an all-fatality build circa 2007, and seems to be ridiculously hard to find. I have all the other fatality-endorsed internal parts ready for a build and video, but without the case, it feels like giving up at the last hurdle. There's no bounty or finders fee, I'm afraid. I'm almost always pretty much broke, and just do this as an expensive hobby. As these things weigh just shy of 13 kilograms, shipping could be a killer, so if possible I'd like to track one down that's in the UK. If anyone has any leads on one of these cases, please message me on my Retro Komodo Facebook page. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be back soon with something else. Bye!